The uh, speaking of which, this uh, this land speed car. Uh, I only got the very. Uh, the, the, I, I heard you know as you know we scheduled this yeah. yesterday. I, I, yeah. I look like I've been on vacation for two weeks because yeah. I have. Yesterday's and, uh, being generous. I think it was like ten o'clock last night that I finally yeah, responded because uh, you know I had the <laughs> headphones on out there just grinding away, welding, grinding. Oh man! And so you'll forgive me for not uh, being prepared with the total details, but I heard I heard E V West Bonneville, and I, I was like, yeah, slut. <laughs> Let's get let's get Michael on the phone. So yeah, so last time we were together, what we blew up a tranny on a dyno over an ocean side. Yeah, right? the Pike <laughs> Speak thing. Yeah, uh, yeah the Pike the Pike Speak car, which was yeah. cool. And if I yeah. recall, it did the the video uh, did did a, did a pretty decent um, amount of views. Yeah, and so and I, and ever that. since, yeah. I've people when people ask me about you know who to go to for electric in California, I've always sent them to you guys. Thanks, um, and I've, I've seen a couple of your cars running around LA, uh, yeah. some of the cars and coffees and stuff, but Bonneville is some other shit. Uh, yeah. I went there. I got to, I got to go 211 miles an hour in oh, a wow. Volkswagen Jetta. Oh, you year. gotta drive that Jetta. Project. I drove the Jetta, yeah. And they went, uh, they went like 209 was the official run. And I was like, I'm gonna beat that official number, and so I just kept my foot in it until I saw two eleven. And uh, it's fun as hell. Uh, for the record, whatever that noise is, if you guys hear it, it's not me. Um, yeah, let me uh, pull the is that your next tell? Oh yeah, there you go. Oh, there you go. Whatever that was, remove the battery it. with anger. Yeah, yeah. But, nobody's um, gonna call. <laughs> yeah. So what? So what class are you running in? What is the car? How does it work? What's the story? Right. So um, we, you know. It, Bonneville's kind of like a bucket list thing for me. My dad grew up in West Hollywood and was a hot rod guy. I ran around with, uh, you know, Von Dutch and guys like that, just doing the the Hollywood hot rod thing. And so I kind of grew up with that influence and um, have never really had a chance to go to Bonneville. My dad's been several times with a couple teams and stuff, and it was just one of those things. And we've tried over the past couple of years to put something together. And, you know, honestly, we've just been so busy. It's been tough. Um, and, uh, this was the year I, I, um, hang out with a buddy of mine from the skateboard industry. I owned a, a company back in the day called gravity skateboards for about 25 years. And, and, uh, I, didn't know yeah. that. I remember yeah. that brand. I, yeah. I, that's, yeah. that's basically yeah. how I got into EV West. When, when we started EV West in 09, there was just like no money in EVs. People were like, you're, you're a fool dude. And, uh, so we, we kind of funded the startup, uh, and investment and all that from skateboards. Uh, so it's kind of like, you know, green transport. Mm. Uh, but anyways, um, how cool. Yeah. You know, kind of got it up and going, um, with that. And, and, uh, uh, it eventually, you know, grew to the point where, where we could run it. But, um, uh, where was I going with that? With Bonneville. The, uh, Your dad at Bonneville. Yeah, my dad. Yeah. And, and so, um, so we've been trying and this, this last year was just kind of finally a point where we had uh, a, a moment where we could do it. And um, the skateboard thing was because of Roger Hickey, who's our driver. And, you know, he's one of these guys that I met through skateboarding. He's been setting skateboard speed records all over the world. He's been over 100 miles an hour on a luge and I think over 90 on a skateboard. So just, you know, uh, like most Bonneville guys, uh, I love you, Roger, but you got to screw loose. <laughs> is he yeah. just pointed straight down like a, like a, like some crazy hill somewhere? <laughs> yeah. Is that yeah, really he's, it? he's a neat guy. He's, uh, he's probably somebody you might want to have on the show. He's a really good storyteller and he's kind of like the uh, smoky eunuch of skateboarding, if you know oh. what that reference means. Meaning like yeah. how to build cheatery skateboards for Nobody said cheat. Whoa, man. Whoa. <laughs> no, no, no. Whoa. There, when you read a rule book, it's really lines between the, the pages. You, yeah. you read between the lines. I mean, we've been doing this. We've got several copies of the Bonneville book and it's just, it's everywhere in here. You know, it's like uh, everybody's reading it and, and we've been uh, actually the staff at SCTA, the technical staff over there has just been fantastic. You know, we want to make sure we're doing everything right a first year build uh you know no surprise electrics are not popular there i think we're the only electric running this year it's kind of an old school out of here crowd, one right? one I, you're there's I, only one i think so That's signed great. up so far you know and it could change but um it's a great it's, venue for it it's much like you know pike speaker and the hill climb stuff you know for electric you're only going to run six to eight minutes yeah uh, plenty of battery for that and totally uh, yeah so um, what do you okay? So what is the what is the vehicle? Is it a, is it based on something or is it some crazy lakester? Yeah. So uh, we originally bought a uh, 
belly tanker, a fuel tank. Oh God! So, yeah. Oh my and, God! Uh, so, oh, so hard. So you have a customer <laughs> with a death wish. That's really where this. Started. Well, <laughs> it was our own death wish. I mean, we literally bought a fuel tank for the shop, and uh, I mean, we're so dumb. You know, we're just like, oh yeah, let's put wheels, shoot an axle through this thing, and put a motor on it. And uh, Roger put Once it Once you know how to weld, when you start drinking tequila, <laughs> it's scary, a whole different right? set of outcomes. Yeah. It's, po- yeah. <laughs> it's possible. And, you know, <laughs> Roger puts the thing into CFD, you know, uh, basically computer arrow analysis, and the thing spins like a top. You know, we start Yikes. talking. And then we're like, hey, you know, uh, you, you guys know SoCal Speed Shop. They did the collaboration with Chevy a little while back where they did a more modern rendition of a belly tanker. And then we're like, well, let's do that. We're electric. And we kind of started going down that path. And again, we're running into severe problems with aero. And we're not so old school Turns enough. out those things only like look kind of aero. <laughs> it turns out I think the only reason people use them is because they were just cheap. <laughs> you know, you could get them. I don't know what the version of Craigslist was after the war, but um, yeah, yeah they, you could find them. Yeah. And um, so then we're like, okay, well, let's make a Lakester with a kind of belly tanker look. And we kept kind of going through this design process and then running between it. Between a Lakester and a belly tanker, like what's a Lakester with a belly tanker look versus a Lakester that's not a belly tanker look? Well, I guess technically in a weird way, a belly tanker is kind of a Lakester. Um, a belly tanker, for those who have no tire, idea what we're talking about, is like a drop tank from an old airplane that yeah. held fuel. It kind of looks like a missile. It is um, basically, yeah, torpedo shaped. Like torpedo. Uh, and you look at some of these and you're surprised the driver can even fit in it with the yeah. engine and steering and linkage and all that stuff. So uh, it's just, it's crazy, you know. But we we kept refining the design process and and got to this point where, you know, we had to pull the nose down to get some front end arrow. We had to get a stabilizer in there and a few other things. And by the time we're done, it essentially looks like what they would call a streamliner, but we're technically a lakester because our wheels sit outside of the body. Okay, okay. so okay. belly tanker is a specific thing, and a lakester yeah. is like any streamliner where the right. wheels are out, outside. outside and they're fully uh, like unshrouded, right? Just yeah. open wheel. Yeah, just okay. open wheels. I mean, basically, our front end. And you're running those looks tires like that look car. like inner tubes, right? Yeah. <laughs> basically, yeah. like they look like you take them off and then go floating down the Colorado yeah. River in them with a cooler. Yeah, and <laughs> if a friend ever asked you to put one on a on a bead on a tire, just say no. Just run away. <laughs> I had to crank those things up. We took them to two different tires shops and they both denied us because they took them to 80 psi and they wouldn't seat and uh i just i put on the the goggles the you know ear protection and just went all the way up and they finally seated at like 125 psi oh my god yeah. oh, <laughs> and, and you know these are good year land speed tires but it's got this you know they're rated for 300 plus miles an hour but it's got the sticker on it like don't over inflate 35 pounds when seating you know? it's just like what <laughs> it's the what weirdest do, thing but... what if you do that thing where you spray the you know butane inside oh, God, there we had everything in there we had like five we did everything it was nuts we had everybody in the shop out there uh the secret or the trick that finally worked is just letting them sit in the sun all day getting as soft and hot as we could possibly get them and then lots of simple green. Simple green, for whatever reason, works really well on tires. I don't okay. know why, but it's there's something real slippery in that. And uh, the that idea, like I, I think, like once that you let them sit in the sun, it's like oh yeah, the the desert tire <laughs> you works when they sit out in the desert for a little it's, while. <laughs> you know, it's just it, it's funny, right? Like as car guys, you're like oh yeah, I know a lot about this. Ask me a Porsche question. Ask me this. But then you go to land speed, and you're just like, I am so out of my element. I don't know any of this, you know, and we're calling guys just asking the most rookie questions. Like, how do we put the tires on? And (laughs) And, and the the endeavor requires so much precision. Like, you know, I'm looking at, you guys have some renderings up on your Instagram and you know, know, the previous electric car record is 340 miles an hour and the shape of your vehicle, like you're not going for 185, like you are going for that. So everything is like CFD and measured and precise. And then you get to the tires and you're like, well, let's grab some of that simple green and a sponge and then get some pasta sauce and let's see if we can get these tires. This on. isn't like, working. Put them in the sun. Yeah, right. no, it's yeah. nuts, you know, and, and you mentioned numbers. If we could dive into that real quick so I can clarify yeah. for the listeners. So the current, um, the fastest electric car speed recorded was 341 and that's the Buckeye Bullet by Ohio State. But their actual record, the recorded record is 314 because you got to run for a whole mile 
Um, and so obviously they were either decelerating or accelerating through the mile because 314 was their average. And that's of two. Well, don't you run both ways as well? They don't run both ways anymore. Uh, somebody's throttle stuck back in the day and um, that kind of Yikes. killed that. I guess he was coming in, uh, as they say, coming in hot to the pits. My God, imagine you're coming in towards yeah. the pits at like 400. Like, yikes! Uh, apparently that happened. Maybe, I, I don't I don't know the here. details, but I was basically told. And it's funny, uh, Matt, because I said the same thing. Like, okay, so we go and run the other way. I mean, I watched all the documentaries and everything, and they just, they don't do that anymore. You run the same way. So like, Not only do we not do it anymore, we don't talk about it either. Yeah, we don't talk about <laughs> it. <laughs> oh, that little guy? You ask if you can go the other way, and they just shake their head and go, oh, you poor child. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, I just pulled um, up the pictures on your Instagram. Uh, you oh, know, what thanks. you didn't mention is, um, I'm sorry, basically, because I came back from my trip, Zach uh -huh. and I, I wanted, a, I wanted to sort of quarantine for a couple days just in case. I've been traveling. Right. Yeah. And so we hate doing these three-way Zoom shows. They suck. Yeah. Ben, and we don't now have we're visual more used assets to it nowadays. today. Yeah. I know, but normally we'd have visual assets to show. But what I'm, all I'm trying to say is what you kind of glossed over is that the car is very pretty. Oh, thank it is you. a very good looking car thank you. with, you uh, know, Ro Roger Hickey of Hickey speed uh, designed it. I mean, we went back and forth, but he carried the weight on his shoulders on that one for sure. And, uh, and it's tough. I, I don't know if you guys have ever done surface modeling in a, in a CAD program. It's really easy to draw uh, chassis tubes and, you know, para modeling is, is pretty easy, but you get into surfaces and this aerodynamic, you know, subtleties and stuff like that. And it really uh, becomes complex. Um, but you know, well, real quick, good. just so 314 is the number. Yeah. So 314 is the number that Ohio state has, because that was their average over the course of uh, two miles on separate days. So when you are kind of in the running for a record, you have one hour to get your car into impound. And then while in impound, you have four hours to work on it and they'll let you go for the second, the backup run, as they call it the next morning. And so that's our plan. But what we really are doing is we're going after an E2 class record. We didn't want to show up to Bonneville like our very first year and like, hey, where's the salt? And we're going to, you know, set the world record. I mean, it's just, it's so uh, unrealistic. And we're very hey, novice, Bertman right? Rowe of you. Yeah, right. So <laughs> Bert Monroe, you know. So, uh, so we're basically, um, we built a Lakester and we kept it under a thousand kilograms, 2200 freedom units. And, um, and so what we're going to do with that is we want to hit what's called an E2 class record. That record right now is only 213 miles an hour. What and separates E2 from E1? Uh, well, so E, the, so the E3 uh, class would oh, be unlimited. Goes the other way? Yeah, it goes the other way. And that would be 2,201 pounds and up, basically 1,001 okay. kilogram and up. And, uh, and you look at some of these things, like I'm not sure the final weight. I heard it was like 10,000 pounds on the uh, Buckeye Bullet Venturi car. So, you know, you can, you can get heavy real quick uh, with a land speed car and electric and all that. So our plan is uh, we've geared our motor to do 338 mile an hour at, at 16,000 RPM. Right. So that's our max wheel speed. 338, 16,000 yeah. RPM. And you have a single speed? One yeah. speed? Single okay. speed. In fact, uh, on our Instagram just yesterday, we posted a video uh, with the new gear set, the reduction in the calibrated speedometer. And the, actually, guys are holding our 930 shafts in because they're not even clipped yet. And we ran it up to that speed, and it came out to be like 3,700 RPM at the flange. I mean, just just crazy. And the wildest thing is, you know, you run it from zero basically up to 337. No gear shifts, no pauses in the motor. Um, and because of the reduction, we're putting close to 2000 foot pounds out of the shaft. Um, wow. so, you know, that's about all the facts we know how so fast you, we're going to so run. You like are, we, you're a, you're like a one-to-one, -one. you're a one-to-one, -one, like a, like a Koenigsegg. We're uh, a 4.5 to one because we have that 16,000 RPM, right? So we reduce 16,000 by 4.5 and we end up with a, uh, flange, you know, basically a wheel speed of around 3,700 RPM max. We're running a 31 inch land speed wheel in the rear. And so that equates to about 337 mile an hour. Now you're, we're going to have slip on the salt. There's a lot of factors. There's wind and all this. We're not going for the 314. We think it's completely unrealistic that we could do it in this car. But what we are doing is um, gathering a lot of data. We've got um, our partners, AEMEV involved in this. And we're going to do some uh, really just data gathering, look at um, what kind of wheel slip we're going to have, um, 
you know, look at a lot. It, yeah, I, <laughs> right. It's going um, to be. Let me just tell you, I got. I wasn't, and I'm, I'm talking about a Jetta. Okay. Yeah. It probably weighed twenty seven hundred pounds. It's, it's not even close to what you're talking about here. And yeah. I couldn't go flat until somewhere around a hundred and twenty five miles yeah. an hour in the top of like fourth gear. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? I, otherwise, it was just zzz, 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 zzz. so yeah. like. I mean, based on our RPM and torque, we yeah, we figured we could spin wheels all the way up to two hundred is what we we calculated. Wow. And, That's some um, like David Donahue yeah. shit. <laughs> but you know, we're just kids at heart. Like, I really, all the crew wants to know is like, can we do a donut? Yes. Yeah. Like, will they let you, us do a donut out there? Like, I think that's you, all you, that, you, you worry about doing a donut at 300 miles an hour is what you should really yeah, be worried no, about. No, 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 you no, might no, want no. a little wider, wider <laughs> track. To do but we that. did, you know, we've, we, you know, like any team, we've been having meetings and kind of assessing a game plan. And so we kind of have a plan and, you know, you go out on the short course and you license up and, you know, get the 150, 175, move to the long course. And then we have some numbers that we're specifically going after uh, to get the record. And then when we're done with that, you know, we've basically given our driver, Roger, the green light to just like light it up, dude. Let's see what this thing has, see if we can hurt it. What can we do? You know, um, cause that's really what we're, you know, going for. Right. I mean, it's amazing. You know, the, with a typical Bonneville car, um, you know, gasoline powered, uh, what you see a lot is uh, you have to do the push start with the trucks, yeah. right? Because the gearing is so yeah. crazy that the things can't even like, you know, idle hardly. I'm yeah. guessing you won't have this problem at all. You'll be no. able to just cruise around, you know, no, we'll have, uh We'll have enough starting torque at the wheel. If we had Velcro tires, we could drive the thing up a wall. <laughs> that would, I mean, listen, that would yeah. be kind of sick. That's our torque, really our torque exceeds the weight of the car. That's hilarious. Yeah. I'm all for a visual demo, by the way. Maybe you should consider driving it up a wall. I think. Well, we've be been talking. Really well it's spent. funny. We've been talking to another Southern California automotive outlet about doing um, some drag racing in it, and literally, I think all we have to do is change the rear tires. Uh, well, what? Yeah, if you tried to do like a, like a, is it so much power that if you had a sticky rear tire and you tried to do drag launches that you think you would probably break it or do you think it would hold up to that type of abuse? Uh, I think it would probably hold up. I don't think we have enough weight in the car. Mm. Right. You, you, um, you know, how much torque you have uh, is kind of insignificant um, without traction and some right. weight over the rear axle yeah so where is the um, where's the motor oh basically it attached right to the rear axle pretty much yeah technically you would call it a, a rear engined vehicle because the differential and the reduction sits in front of the motor right and so if you look uh -huh. uh, yeah <laughs> look at the surprised look he's like is this wait a are the whole shit is the whole motors behind the driver everything's yeah. back there yeah so if you look oh, at that picture well, with the two big oh. cans back there one half is the motor and the other half is the inverter and then the reduction box and differential sit in the middle so yeah oh um, that's that's a rear that's rear engine okay right. and then where are the batteries just the floor so there's a big empty box in front of that. We're putting in a, um, an experimental battery pack that we picked up. It's about 37 kilowatt hour, about 600 pounds. Um, and that goes right in the middle. And, and we actually kind of need a little bit of the weight. We could have done a lighter battery, um, but we just wanted to, to kind of get some weight around the rear your wheels are you, are you at your you're at your max weight i imagine right? no the, we were uh we had it on the long acres earlier and i think we're estimating about 1700 so we'll probably come in about 300 under you know roger's probably about 200 190 or something mm -hmm. like that so we'll be right there race rate you know 19 or something so is this thing you think it, the way the way is the way that you would set up a car like this to to basically drain the whole battery pack in like a four or five mile run and just flow as much juice as you possibly can or how many runs uh, do you think you can get out of a, out of a charge? Well, so um, first of all, when you're draining the pack, your actual voltage goes down, right? And there's a direct linear relationship between the voltage and horsepower. So um, you don't want to run it all the way down because then you would be, you know, literally losing horsepower as you go down the run. So we're trying to stay in that top 50% of the pack, right? So we took, um, according to our calculations, a wide open run would uh, be somewhere between 16 and 20 kilowatt hours of energy. 
and um, which in a streetcar would get you like 75 miles for reference, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Turns and, out going yeah, fast turns takes out, a uh, lot of energy. Yeah, the yeah. range kind of sucks in yeah, a lane speed yeah. car. And uh, but how? But it would be pretty gangster if, as another visual demo, you drove it like 100 miles on the street. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, like, we little, probably little, could if we could make it over a speed food. bump. The things like two, you know, inch off the ground or something. I, it's funny because I was you know driving home late night and kind of delirious working so late and I was like I wonder if we could take this on the street and I realized we can't even get out of the parking lot like yeah. there's no like, way how much it, just, it, would, it would high center does it have um, any steering angle at okay, all okay so you think so it's really you're charging it up basically every run right or you might get two yeah and I'll come back to steering angles yeah because I want to talk about that a little bit but the, the charging is fascinating because we're doing kind of a world first or whatever you want to call it and again we're crazy um we are gonna uh solar charge we figured uh Bonneville oh, is yeah, I mean, look it, man. Uh, it's beautiful out there, right? I've been on Instagram, and I just kind of follow the hashtag Bonneville uh, Salt Flats. And it's a neat hashtag, by the way, because half of it is just badass automotive stuff. And then the other half is, you know, a bunch of girls going out there and just posing uh, with That's this. That's hilarious. You know, but it, it, in all Influencers honesty. Influencers in the wild. <laughs> it's a wonderful piece of nature, right? It's oh, yeah. absolutely gorgeous out there. Uh, tons of photographs. I mean, we all look at, you know, sales slick photographs of cars and stuff like that. And, and the Southern California equivalent is El Mirage. Yes. Um, My favorite right. place so, to get video. I love right. it. Right. So we, we kind of have a responsibility to protect these areas. Right. And we're like, oh yeah, we're this cool electric car company. And then we show up and we just start firing up the Onan generators or whatever. It just doesn't make sense. So uh, a good friend of mine, actually a friend that goes all the way back to like when we were five years old, uh, has started a company called Tier 4 Solar, and he makes solar tracking systems that actually use servos to angle the panels so that they're always the most efficient angle to the sun. That's awesome. And we're, yeah, we're bringing that trailer out, and we're actually going to generate our own electricity right there on the salt so uh, for ass. all of our runs. Yeah, so we're basically enough, the sustainable uh, yeah. team. It'd be like, you know, VP showing up with their car, and then in the truck, they got like a little petroleum distillery or something in the back, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. No, the, 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 we'll actually be creating the fuel at Bonneville. To, it's to amazing. But you said there's four hours right in between runs. So can you charge up enough juice in four hours with that rig to be back where you need to be for run two? Yeah, absolutely. So what we have is we have actually three battery packs. So we're taking almost 120 kilowatt hour of energy for the car. Um, and the trailer has 48 kilowatt hour uh, plus some reserves. So the, the trailer's got about 50 kilowatt hour. So, you know, if you take 16 kilowatt hour into 50 right off the bat without, you know, if it was completely cloudy, we'd still get three runs off the trailer before we needed solar. Um, but, you know, it's going to be sunny. It always is. Right. We check the weather. So the whole time while, you know, we're depleting the batteries charging, the solar system's charging those batteries up and we've got them in rotation. So we've got a pretty good plan for this. We've done, you know, other events that have required, you know, creative charging and things like that. So, um, yeah, definitely took some planning and we, we wanted to do something unique, you know, and now you're going to go to Bonneville. There's going to be, you know, all this stuff everywhere. And then we're going to be the nerds in the corner with the solar panels and the electric car. They <laughs> make movies so bad, about man. the fucking nerds, dude. They make <laughs> movies about <laughs> the nerds. Bert, Bert yeah, Monroe it's... was a nerd, but I hear from who told Oh, Gail Banks. Gail Banks told us that on the Bonneville salt flats, Bert Monroe fucked everybody. 